Did you know they say that Ancestry is the best for reading through historical records and there are over 100 million family trees and you can take, you can trace your origins to 1,000 plus regions. But did you also know that Genesis chapter 10 is the ultimate genealogical record because it records the generations of the sons of Noah who would ultimately be responsible for repopulating the earth. Welcome to a beginner's commentary to the book of Genesis chapter 10. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this teaching series. Now, before we get into chapter 10, I want to let you know that this video is being sponsored by MichaelLawsonSpeaks.com, where you can find this captivating Christian hoodie, the perfect blend of faith and fashion for individuals who appreciate the essence of Christian streetwear, or this character traits backpack, this Christian character traits backpack that is part of the periodic table of character traits book collection, which is the book and coffee mug sold separately, of course, but you can get yours today at michaellawsonspeaks.com. Now, let's get into chapter 10. Excuse me. Let's start with verses 1 through 12. Now, these are the records of the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, Ham, Japheth, and sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tiras. The sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Rifath, and Togmara, Togarma. The sons of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kitim, and Dodanim. From these, the people of the coastlines of the nations were separated into their lands, every one according to his language, according to their families, into the nations. The sons of Ham were Cush, Misraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havila, Sabta, Ra'ama, and Sabteka. And the sons of Ra'ama were Sheba and Dedan. Now Cush fathered Nimrod. He became a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Achad, and Chalne, in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehebohir, Kala and resin between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. Okay, let's unpack this family tree. Now, I understand these are some difficult names to pronounce, let alone remember. However, since God instructed Moses to write down everything, we must therefore assume that it has a purpose. So we'll do our very best to interpret without reading into it. What I want to follow is the mighty hunter before the Lord, Nimrod, and do a brief examination of the family tree and this kingdom, and, and this would include Babel and the building of Nineveh. Now, we are going to cover Babel, can be pronounced Babel, 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 
in the next verse. So it will become very clear who Nimrod is in type. What do I mean by type? Let me give you a couple of examples. Jonah was a type of Christ in how he was in the belly of the great fish for three days, just as Jesus was buried for three days, and yet they both arose to life, or how Noah's ark is a type of Christ in how those in the ark were saved, just like those who are in Christ are saved. Okay, now, back to the story and Babel, where I'll let you know right now that Babel, Babel, was a bad thing, and so was Nineveh. So, to reconcile the meaning behind the statement, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord, in light of what we are about to learn regarding Babel, it would seem to indicate that the phrase in question cannot mean that Nimrod was bent towards the Lord or even worshiping him or worshiped him. Therefore, we must conclude that the statement is talking about his great skill as a showcase before the Lord, as a general statement that does not have anything to do with his heart or attitude, possibly towards being bent towards God. Does that make sense? Do you see the difference? Anyway, we all do things before the Lord, however. The question is, what you're doing for the Lord or to glorify yourself? In other words, are you just showing off your great skill and talent, making sure that all of the attention is on you? Think about that. Let's continue with verses 13 through 18. Nizraim fathered Ludim. Anamim, Lehabim, Nefutim, Nefuthim, Parthusim, Kashluhim, from where came the Philistines. And Kafotim, Canaan, fathered Sidon, his firstborn. And Heth, the Jebusite, the Amorite, the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite, the Arvadite, the Zamarite, the Zamarite, and the Hamathite. And afterward, the families of the Canaanite were spread abroad. Now, let's talk about the family of Canaan. Now, we really can't get into too much right now because all we have before us in the text is the names. But remember how Noah awoke from his drunkenness and cursed Canaan, who wasn't even around? Well, let's take a look at who Canaan fathered to get a little more insight. We're going to learn about how exceedingly wicked this family line is later. But take note of the Amorite who will be called out by name in chapter 15. Continuing verse, uh, with verse 19. The territory of the Canaanite extended from Sidon going toward Gerar, as far as Gaza, and going toward Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. Make a mental note of the size of the territory. Continuing with verses 20 through 32. These are the sons of Ham, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and by their nations. Also to Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, and the older brother of Japheth, children were born. The sons of Shem were Elam. Asher, Arpachshad, Lud, and Aram. The sons of 
Aram were Uz, Hu, Gether, and Mash. Arpakshad fathered Shela, and Shela fathered Eber. Two sons were born to Eber. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his day the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. Joktan fathered Amudad, Shelef, Hazarmaveth, Jera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Oba, Abimial, Abimael, Sheva, Ophir, Havila, and Jobab. All of these were the sons of Joktan. Now, their settlement extended from Mesha going toward Safar, the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem, according to their families, according to their languages, by their lands, and according to their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, according to their descendants, by their nations, and out of these nations were separated on the earth after the flood. Okay, that was a lot to take in, but we are family. And that right there is where we all came from. This is our beginning as a human race. We descended from Noah, essentially. And you can try and do some that are not you can try and do as some that are not naturally born Jews try to do and trace your lineage using these verses, but I don't see the point in these vain adventures because you can't really know for sure. Now, I don't begrudge anyone who does. I simply don't. Now, I have to admit that I am horrible at genealogies and family trees, especially if I don't write it down. For some reason, my brain just doesn't track any of it. Remember, if you've missed any of this teaching series, I've created a playlist. And with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance towards you and give you peace. Amen. See you next time for chapter 11.